My name is Saquon Lawrence. I am the CEO of the Chicago Center for Arts and Technology. And what I want to talk about today is why we matter. I mean, SHICAT is what we call it for short, is one of the few spaces in our region committed to both youth programming and adult uh, vocational training programming. And so to that end, in the space we're in right now, this is our design studio, and here is where youth uh, do cartooning, which is a big deal for us, silk screening, painting, printing, and the, the, the cartooning is a big deal because what we want is for our youth, which are primarily African American and Latino, to lift up their culture and talk about their culture in positive, life-affirming ways. We want our youth to advance an alternative narrative to the stereotypical depiction of, of their communities and to use their culture as a way to lift up models of excellence. And so we're using mythology as a device uh, to talk about uh, places, things, and people that promote and advance a positive way of being. And we want them to be assertive in that way. And I know earlier you had a chance to look at the digital studio. And in that digital studio, that's where you take these ideas that are generated in the design studio, in, in the cartooning program, and animate those stories. And so this is really interesting. So, in, so, so imagine a 60-minute animated tale based on the culture of African American and Latino people, really, uh, but, but generated by young people. And then also in that studio, we have audio and video production. And so those, those youth will produce a, a score, a film score, so to speak, to overlay over the animated tale. And so now you have youth in design and in digital um, who are able to, to, to participate in what we call a capstone project, which allows for them to collectively participate in a project, a vocation, where they are telling their own story with their own authentic voice about how great their communities are. And, and what their possibilities are and their potential, what their potentials, what their potential is, and so this is really important for them to help uh, create high levels of self-esteem based on achievement, and and and, and achievement uh, that stemmed from you know their classical civilizations, their history, their culture, and the things that they've done to contribute to this society, and that's a story that's not often told, and so. Uh, that's a big deal, and also uh, I don't know. I don't know if you had a chance to see it, but the 3D Maker Lab in the in the, in the print the 3D printers, that is also a place where the kids can do figurines based on the historic figures that they introduce us to. So it's it's really interesting the use of the technology and the art. And as I was saying earlier, what I want people to appreciate about this space, if you look if you look, you got a view that a lot of our kids don't see. And so we intentionally wanted the kids on the fourth floor so that they can appreciate this view, this skyline, this historic skyline that is Chicago. Um, and, you know, understand that, that, that they have a role to play in the building of this great city. And so this is a reminder of, of, of these two cities we live in. And what we want in SHICAT is to bring this city together, right? And so, uh, one of the ways that we did this, I just have to say, is through partnerships. This is a big, a big part of our model of strategic partnerships. So we worked with the schools, the, uh, Chicago Public Schools, and one of the one of the key features is our commitment to um, ombudsman, um, North Lawndale College Prep, um, Bridgescape, uh, option schools, as well as charter schools, and those that are not charter. Because we want our kids, low-income kids, to have access to this to to to, the, to this facility, in the way of the after-school programs. So the kids, imagine, get here around three thirty, four o'clock. After-school programs, and our adult programs, which are on the lower level of this building, are centered around advanced manufacturing, specifically in lab tech and quality control in the food cluster, and also maintenance mechanic, which is a big deal, particularly as you think about the fact that manufacturing and some of the categories of, of, of uh, jobs are going away because of robotics and mechanization, right? Well, the training that we're providing 
uh, for those who will be fixing those machines. And so that the, so that the, tra the trajectory for those types of titles, those types of occupations are going up, not down. The wages are significant, relatively speaking. And so all of our jobs, uh, all our training is based on the sector the sector and the demand in those in, in those industries. The other sector we're focusing on is the healthcare sector, and to that end, we're uh, training in maintenance. Not, I'm sorry, not maintenance, but um, medical assistance and medical billing and coding. All of these jobs, uh, our our students when they get to the labor market will get will be getting paid thirty six thousand dollars and up, and that's important because these are meaningful wages. And so it doesn't make any sense to invest this kind of capital, human, social, financial, if the, if the wages are not going to be meaningful. So that's another really important feature. Uh, so adult programs in manufacturing and in healthcare and after school programs in design, uh, digital uh, programming, digital photography, graphic animation, graphic design, um, and also 3D printing. And the last thing I'll say is that we also are a place where we're, we're inviting practitioners, scholars, um, intellectuals, uh, organizers to come together and to have a conversation about the future of our city and the future of, the, of our society. And what is it that we want 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now? And we call it the Future Maker Series. And the first uh, uh, conversation we're, we're planning will take place in June, and it's entitled uh, The Future of Work in the Age of Globalization and, and, and Robotics, you know, subtext, what happens if you have structural unemployment, back to what I was uh, alluding to earlier, if you have jobs that are just not going to come back because of robotics, right? And what are the implications for communities of color? And what, is it, what are the implications for, for my field, community development and community economic development? We have to start having that conversation. Those conversations are taking place, but they're in think tanks, they're at the universities. We want to bring those conversations into the community and engage our people in, in this discussion so that we can have a solution to this, you know, and so that we're not caught off guard. Uh, and then that's just one conversation that we have. We, we, this, there'll be four of these a year, one every quarter. So we're very excited. So this is a community center, a community development center. It's an, um, a program for youth and, and, and art and technology. And it's a workforce training center, and it, but specifically in manufacturing and in the healthcare sector. Hi, my name is Mike Matthews, and I'm the digital teaching artist here at SHICAT, the Chicago Center for Arts and Technology. We uh, are a nonprofit located here at the, uh, Paulina and 13th Street. And we offer youth education services and career education. Uh, for people in the Pilsen, Lawndale, and UIC Medical District areas, um, I teach in the teaching or I teach in the digital lab, uh, which is where we do or photo, video production, um, some design coursework, stop motion, animation, uh, things of that nature. Uh, the lab is pretty large. We have a bunch of student stations where they'll be situated at Mac computers and able to actually edit software and work on projects. Um, and then we also have uh, lighting and photo packages that allow students to kind of get their hands on some of the equipment that they can use uh, to make their projects. Um, on the 22nd, on March 22nd, we have an open house, our grand opening really, where people can come and learn a little bit more about the space. They can talk with some of the teaching artists as well as take tours of the facilities and um, kind of get a better feel for what we're trying to do here. Hi, I'm Sheena Shukla. I'm the Youth Student Services Coordinator here at the Chicago Center for Arts and Technology. On March 20th, our Youth Arts Program is launching. As you, as you can see, our Maker Lab is right behind me where we have 3D printers, we have CNC routers, laser cutters. Um, currently, we're recruiting from um, schools around the University Village area, schools in Pilsen, Little Village, and North Lawndale. Um, currently, we're targeting many option schools um, where there's not many after school programs um, in their facilities. And in addition, we're targeting schools that don't have many arts programs. Um, we're very excited to have students on board. And on March 22nd, we're hosting our um, grand opening. Um, please come. Hi, I'm Jen Thomas, and I'm a teaching artist at the Chicago Center for Arts and Technology. And we have our big grand opening coming up on March 22nd. And we are actually starting our youth programs on March 20th. So we are going to be offering after school arts programming at no cost to the students beginning on March 20th. 
Uh, I am the design arts instructor, and so I will be teaching a couple of courses coming up. Uh, one is graphic design, and it's specific to logo design, and I'll also be teaching a class called Visual Narrative, which is essentially storytelling uh, in book form. So how do you tell a story with different book formats? So we're going to be focusing on traditional structures and also thinking about sculptural ways that you can tell a story visually. So another uh, feature that I'd like to talk about is our location. So we're inside the Illinois Medical District, and we're right by the pink line, and, um, and so we're, we, we're really close to major arteries. We're right off Ashland, we're right off Roosevelt. The pink line stops about four or five blocks from here on Polk. Uh, and, for, and, 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 and when you look out of our windows, you can see the pink line. It's really right next to us. And so for a lot of us, you, you get a real sense that you're in Chicago and we are really proud Chicagoans. So this is, this is a big deal for us. The other thing that I want to talk about is, and I get this question all the time, how do you finance this? And so um, we've been um, the beneficiaries of donors, uh, high net worth individuals who have just been incredibly generous and committed to, to the communities that we serve. Uh, we've raised um, $4.9 million in new market tax credits. We've also had, had support from Polk Brothers Field Foundation and Nepal um, and, and, and also the Julian Grace Foundation. So we've got some foundation support. We think we'll do, we'll do better once we're open. And uh, the other day, for instance, we had 50 children here from the schools. We're not even open yet. And so that's encouraging to us. And, uh, but we need investment. We need support, like a lot of organizations. Uh, and the reason that we think that we matter and why we warrant that kind of investment is because our students, the research shows that when they're in spaces like this and when they have the instructors that we have and we are focusing on STEM and critical thinking, that these youth are going to do well. They're going to do well. They're going to go on to go to college. They're going to go on to a higher ed, and they're going to be real contributing members to society and, 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 and to their communities. And so uh, we're constantly looking for investment, uh, but this, the investment for us is strategic because our uh, adults are taxpayers. Um, they are, as I said before, contributing. Our youth, uh, because you invest in the way that we're talking about, but the research shows that they won't be involved in a lot of those things that derail them and, and, and in fact, cost society. And so we're excited about the model. We're excited about our approach. Um, we think about this, again, in terms of strategic investment. So uh, if anybody out there listening, you know, who want to contribute, uh, just, you know, go to our website, uh, www.shycat.org, C-H-I-C-A-T.org. Uh, we need your help. Uh, hello, my name is Justin Boats, and uh, I am the Maker Lab teaching artist at the Chicago Center for Arts and Technology. Um, uh, behind me, we have uh, some of our 3D printers uh, in one of the best uh, maker spaces in the city. Um, we've got um, uh, six Maker Gear M2s, uh, four Taz 6s. Um, this space is just amazing. We also have um, a 50-watt Zing laser cutter. Um, we have a uh, Carvey CNC router and an X-Carve um, CNC router from Inventables. Um, I'm playing around right now with the uh, Roland um, a GS24 vinyl cutter. We have one of these and three other vinyl cutters um, for the kids. Um, I'll be teaching um, uh, classes on digital fabrication. This um, fall I'll be teaching a class focusing on 3D printing where kids will be learning about 3D modeling and, um, and 3D, uh, 3D printing itself. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's amazing stuff. Um, we're going to be having an open house on uh, March 22nd and uh, I'll be in here answering questions of parents and students and, uh, and, uh, and perhaps giving some demos on these amazing uh, machines in this space. So please come and we'd, uh, we'd love to have you. So the space we're in now, we're on the lower level and these rooms, these classrooms are committed to adult training. Uh, as I was alluding to earlier, this particular room is for medical assistance uh, in the healthcare sector, and this program will start in January 2018. And uh, right now, well, we don't have it outfitted yet, but we will. And the plan is to 
uh, provide training, contextual sector-driven training for those who want to get into the healthcare sector. The, the other training uh, program we have in the healthcare sector is medical building and coding, and I'll show you that room in a minute. Um, but the thing that's important in this part of our model is that we want to be f fluid, we want to be able to adapt, we want to be nimble in the event that the, that the market suggests that we should be training in another uh, occupation, we'll be ready for that. So these rooms are intentionally designed to be flexible. So five years from now, if, if phlebotomy or some other type of uh, uh, profession or vocation or occupation is required, and that's what our region and, and, and our employers require, and that's what our people want to uh, access and be trained on, we can, we can accommodate that. So that's very, very important as, as you think about, and as you go through the space. All of our jobs, as I said earlier, the, the market pays thirty-five to forty-five thousand dollars a year in the case of our manufacturing training program. So these are these are meaningful wages. Uh, and these are career tracks. So this is this is important for our people. And again, we're serving primarily African American and Latino youth and families. So this is very very important. It's an important project. Um, and again, lots of windows, lots of light. You can't see it right now because we shaved it down. But it's just a really nice space, and I think the, I think the students are going to appreciate it. So in the hallways here, you can see the towel, the clay towel from the original building that was built in the 20s. You see the exposed brick. So this is a nice feature. And one of the things that Shy Cat did, I think, effectively was to fuse these old features from the original building, this new contemporary kind of aesthetics. So it's a yeah, original clay tile. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'll see up here, Wanda, the uh, exposed brick. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then you see just a regular drywall here. So you can see old and new. The contractors are still in here, so you see this paint, the bucket of paint. So um, here you can see this. We just took these stairs up to the roof before this. The only way to get to the roof was a fire escape on the outside of the building. Yeah, which was not cool. So uh, we made a significant investment to get to the roof, two staircases and an elevator now. So that's in preparation for our rooftop garden. Uh, we have photovoltaics up there. Because this is a lead building, lead silver. Yeah. And uh, here, artwork all on these walls here. These columns. There are 48 in the building. You can see here and all 48 of those will have art on them. Art from the youth in the community. And again those communities are Pilsen, Little Village in North London. All right. Yeah, so art all along these walls. So this is again one part art gallery, one part tech center, and one part community development center. Yeah. So it's pretty, yeah it's really really I think an important project. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> well, I hope so. Well, and that's a good, well, I'm glad you said that because we will take youth and take adults from all over the city. We just target those communities, but any, anybody from any uh, part of the city, they're welcome. Yeah, 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 yeah.
so now we're standing next to our state-of-the-art kitchen. And this is, a, this is important because we plan to have chefs come in once a week and chefs from around the city come in and prepare healthy meals for our staff and, and, and children. And we want to create community. And so we, we will be eating together, um, all of us, students, staff, and our, our instructors and hopefully our parents will come in and join us. This is also the kitchen that we'll be using to prepare the meals to help facilitate our uh, lecture series, which I talked about earlier, our, our discussion series on the future of our community and the futures of, future of our society. And this is also a multi-use space that people rent. This is a big deal because we've had five inquiries already. We're not even open. Uh, from people who want to rent the space. So this is also fee for service. And, you know, again, you see large windows. This is by design for us. You know, we have three fundamental principles that we start with is environment shapes behavior. When you have a beautiful space, you could create beautiful people. Um, low income people are assets, not liabilities. And so we have a corresponding practice to that value orientation. And that means that we self-consciously attract students from low-income areas because we know that they're assets, we know that they have aspirations and strengths and, and, and can and will contribute to our communities and to our, and to our city and our society. And one of the things I want to talk about uh, is the school right across the street, Simpson Academy, and the principal there is unbelievable. She's just wonderful. And th that is a school, an uh, option school for uh, young mothers, and those young mothers, many of them are already interested in, in, in our after-school programs and in our vocational programs, those who are 18 and, and older. So they're just a natural partner given their proximity to us. It is, it's just a really wonderful relationship. Uh, you see we have a screen here where we are able to show movies and documentaries. And so this is, you know, this is a multi-use space. It is multi-dimensional. Um, and, and, you know, and, and again, this is, this is the space that we think our people deserve. And so we've made a huge investment in this, in this facility. And over to the left, you see an art gallery. You can see some of the art already that will be hung and on display. Uh, we've had artists from all over the city come and, and sell us art and, 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 and also offer art to be sold moving forward. And some have just loaned us art to put on the wall because they're just committed, committed to, this, to this idea. So videos, movies, documentaries, discussions, lecture series, state-of-the-art kitchen, uh, creating community here, art gallery for our youth to display their work as well as some of our artists throughout, throughout our community. It's a major project and uh, it's what our city and what our region uh, need and we just we're just really excited about it. So.